Hi, welcome to review. The movie begins when a stone appears and is discovered by Aragon, a farm boy who lives in Alagasia with his uncle Garo and cousin Roran, is out hunting for deer. Aragon brings the stone home in the hopes of exchanging it for food but discovers it is actually an egg when a blue dragon emerges from it. His palm develops a magical mark as he touches the dragon. Arya, Brahm, and Galbatorix himself are among those seen responding to this incident. As the dragon grows to its full size over time, Aragon gives it shelter, food, and teaches it how to fly. The dragon addresses herself as Sephira and addresses him through their shared thoughts. When they leave, the Razak, one of Durza's hideous minions, enter the village in search of the dragon and the rider, killing Aragon's uncle in the process. Aragon exiles Sephira, blaming her for the demise of his uncle. When Brum arrives, he removes Aragon from the community, informs him of Sephira's significance, and advises him to call Sephira back. Aragon calls Sephira to share his thoughts, and when she answers, she extends her forgiveness for what he had earlier said. The Varden are rebel freedom fighters fighting against Galbatorix, and Brum is leading the group there. On the way, Brum informs Aragon of the existence of the Razak, Durza, Galbatorix, and Dragon Riders. Additionally, he instructs Aragon in swordplay. Along the journey Aragon encounters Angela, a fortune teller in a small village, who informs him of a girl who needs his assistance and of his perilous journey ahead. When the Urgles, Galbatorix's servants, attack Brahm and Aragon, Aragon tries to imitate Brahm and defeats them all with a blue fire magic attack before passing out from exhaustion. He's saved by Sephira. Aragon learns from Brahm how to master his magic and unite it with Sephira. Aragon and Sephira assist Brahm in killing the Razak after he learns to fly. Brahm then reveals that he was once a rider whose dragon was killed by Morzin, a rogue rider working with Galbatorix. Arya serves as the bait in a trap that Durza sets for Aragon. Aragon locates her after hearing her telepathic calls, but Durza ambushes him. Brum comes to Aragon's aid even though he is outmatched and suffers a fatal injury in the process. Aragon shoots a vengeful arrow into Durza's head, killing him in a fit of rage. As the group flies away, Brum succumbs to his injuries and passes away. The sword that was formerly Morzin's but now belongs to Brahm, Zarok, is given to Aragon. A hooded figure that has been pursuing them is confronted by Aragon. They are led to the Varden by that man, who reveals himself to be Murta. When he arrives, the Varden put Murta in prison because he is Morzin's son. Durza and his men quickly encircle the rebel camp after that. As Galbatorix's forces approach, Aragon, Sephira, Arya, and the Varden prepare for battle. During the conflict, Murta manages to free himself and help the Varden, saving the dwarf King Hrothgar and demonstrating his reliability. Durza, who is seated on his own beast, engages Aragon and Sephira in aerial combat. He is ultimately killed, but Sephira is gravely hurt. While attempting to heal her with magic, Aragon again faints from the strain. Aragon wakes up the next morning with Murta by his side. Despite his fears, he discovers Sephira to be in full recovery. Although this fantasy adventure movie has some thrilling action sequences and visually stunning scenes, it ultimately lacks in terms of plot development and character growth. It is challenging to emotionally invest in the protagonist's journey because the dialogue and performances frequently come across as wooden. Fans of the genre may find it enjoyable but it lacks the uniqueness and substance necessary to stand out in a crowded field of fantasy adaptations. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe.